Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me once more as I take a nostalgic look back through my engagement with Magic the Gathering and attempt to bring the past and present together in revisiting and rebuilding my older commander decks. So there's a storm brewing outside my window tonight. You might be able to hear some light rain and thunder at some point. And I felt that was the perfect atmosphere to talk about Sulkinar, the Swamp King. So Sulkinar is the second half of the deck on Black Blade deck tech that I have made previously, in that he was the villain of the comic book series which focused on deck on Black Blade. As a bit of history, I started playing um, Commander in the early part of this decade. My first EDH decks were all monocolored though. So Dakon and Sulkanar were the first multicolored generals that I made decks for. Uh, the early spirit of Commander in those days was around using jank, um, underutilized, often unusable cards, trying to pull them together in some kind of twisted and wonderful synergy. So Sulkanar certainly fits the criteria of being jank and unusable. My early build of the Swamp King was a Voltron approach using artifacts. Um, at five mana, that didn't really work. And without a whole lot more going for him, um, it was difficult to be competitive as um, EDH evolved over time. So there were a few things that drew me to Sulkanar in the first place. Uh, the name, the art, certainly not the abilities. Although these presented me with um, one of my first real deck building challenges in making a deck that I'd never made before and have never made since. So at 5 CMC with a 5-5 body, the other things Sulkanar offers are Swamp Walk, and whenever a player plays a black spell, you gain one life. Uh, that's certainly a niche design space, and so opens up a range of possibilities uh, in deck building, namely around uh, Swamp Walk and gaining life whenever a player plays a black spell. The first creature type that popped into my head when I saw, when I thought Swamp Walk was zombies, so I've decided what better zombie general in the Grixis colors than uh, Sulkanar the Swamp King. So I run 36 lands in the deck. I don't feel they're imported enough to talk about. It's the usual uh, Grixis stuff with the um, Grixis panorama, uh, crumbling necropolis and all of that. The only non-basic I feel is worth uh, mentioning is Smoldering Marsh. And it's only worth mentioning because it's a Swamp Mountain. It suits Sulkanar perfectly. So these are what I like to call the nucleus of the deck in that they support the commander design. And when I play these cards, there's no mistake that I'm playing Sulkanar the Swamp King. So the first is uh, Blanket of Night. Um, so that turns all uh, lands into swamps in addition to their normal types. Demon's Horn. Whenever a player plays a black spell, you gain one life. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Sulkanar's um, horn in, represented in the art there, but um, yeah, that's his little talisman uh, zombie master um, all zombies gain swamp walk and you can regenerate them and of course uh, a staple in a Sulkanar deck is filth as long as filth is in your graveyard and you control a swamp your creatures have swamp walks um, that's pretty necessary and it's also pretty necessary to have enough cards that get swamp into your graveyard in support of the second ability I'm running a lot of black spells in the deck I'll just start with the artifacts. So these are the, probably um, among the only non-black spells I have. Uh, there are probably, uh, there are a couple of creatures I think that are non-black, but um, we'll get to those soon. So the artifacts, of course, are just the usual uh, signets. The, uh, I've got the Demir and the Rakdos. I felt the Izet signet was uh, aligned too much with the forces of good. Uh, Demon Spine Whip, uh, you can pump a creature pretty handy when uh, you can get um, turn one of your opponent's lands into a swamp and push it through. And um, another talisman, the Obelisk of Grixis. A large portion of the creatures are zombies. On the lower end I've got the um, the typical Grixis mascot, the Nightscape Familiar. And it can regenerate too, so it's a pretty handy blocker. Um, another couple of other low end creatures, uh, two mana, I've got the Skirk Ridge. Exumer, the Rakdos Guild Mage, which um, has a discard ability. Uh, at three mana, I've got a Vesper Ghoul. Tap it to uh, add a mana of any color. Uh, Moaning Wall. Most people neglect walls in Magic. 
I feel like with an aggressive deck like this, in particular when you're sending through a lot of unblockable creatures, you're going to get some hate in return. So just having a wall is handy to stop something. And it's also got that cycling ability. Uh, Bone Dancer. Now Bone Dancer is a throwback. You can put uh, the top card of that opponent's uh, graveyard into the battlefield under your control. So if you give Bone Dancer Swamp Walk and um, you can get something good in return perhaps. Uh, Shambling Remains. Zombie Trailblazer. So you can turn a land into a swamp or you can tap um, and untap zombie and uh, give a, another creature swamp walk until end of turn. It's a bit of a task to um, put it down with the three three black symbols, but um, most of my land base is uh, black leaning. Uh, Graveborn Muse is pretty handy card draw, and you're hopefully gaining a lot of life. Grave Digger to return something. Uh, Lurching Rot Beast, again another uh, semi playable card in my my view, but um. It's got the cycling ability, a cursed horde, a target attacking zombie gains indestructible. I've got a little the little Grixis, little Grixis Drake. Um, Sonai Drake, four mana flying in haste. Uh, I feel that's pretty good. Now this is one of the only I think this might actually be the only non black creature that I have in the deck. Uh, Wildfire Eternal, but it's um its ability makes it an instant include for me. So Whenever Wildfire Eternal uh, attacks and isn't blocked, you may cast an instant or sorcery card without paying its mana cost. Um, that's pretty good, especially when you can give it unblockable. And it's a zombie, which is uh, very handy. Raving Dead. Um, now that's a good target for Swamp Walk. Uh, Phyrexian Delver to return a creature. Custody Lich. Um, now this is... On point. It is on theme because uh, when it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch, so that suits the Swamp King down pat. And uh, whenever you become the monarch, target player sacrifices a creature. So this is one of those instances where you won't actually mind losing the monarch because um, having a uh, unblockable horde of zombies, if you can um, turn some lands into swamps, um, you can get the monarchy back uh, pretty regularly. A Lightning Reaver. Um, a nice little Rakdos zombie. I'm a big fan of the Lightning Reaver, actually. So the number of charge counters that are on it is the amount of damage it deals to each opponent uh, at the end of your turn. And obviously with Swamp Walking, um, it's going to be getting through um, a fair bit. Uh, Street Wraith is probably the only non-zombie creature in the deck, apart from Filth. But um, Street Wraith has Swamp Walk, so he's on theme. But um, one of the best cycling, uh, cycling cards in Magic. Uh, pay two life to cycle it. So you can get it in the graveyard early. Um, a Nurid Merc Diver. Uh, the Jessian Zombies. Um, yeah, these are really only in here for the island and swamp cycling. And the last creature is uh, Thraximandar, or Thraximondo, as we like to call him in my playgroup. Um, Thraximando is one of the best zombie assassins in Magic the Gathering. Um, not that there are many, but um, just his ability, whenever uh, he attacks, defending players sacrifices a creature. Uh, in terms of the non-creature spells, um, all of the spells have black in the ability. I'll start with the pure mono black spells. Knight's Whisper for card draw, Cemetery Recruitment for the same, and also to return a creature. Bile Blight uh, to help deal with some token um, strategies. Night Creep. Now, I'm a bit in the air about uh, including Night Creep here. I feel it's on theme, but um, uh, until end of turn, all creatures become black and all lands become swamps. I guess if you're stuck, you can um, play Night Creep. Um, Hirobi's Whisper. If you control the swamp, destroy target non-black creature. Ashes to Ashes lets you remove two target non-artifact creatures from the game. Pretty cool, so you gain one life off casting it if Salkanor or the Demon's Horn is on the battlefield, and um, you only take four instead of the five. Pretty good deal to me. Um, Essence Extraction, uh, three damage while you gain three life. Uh, I like Dark Bargain from Dominaria. I bought a whole bunch of these and um, put them in any deck where I was splashing black. Uh, Ambition's Cost for drawing three cards. Agonizing Demise, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Uh, I should mention that um, 
A lot of these cards that comprise this deck are from the Ajani versus Nicole Bolas dual deck, which was um, a long time ago now. So Agonizing Demise is a bit of a holdover from that deck. Uh, Giz is bidding. Uh, Sorcery lets you put two zombies into play. Diabolic Tutor when you absolutely need something. Unholy Hunger. Um, destroy target creature, but uh, five mana. It's a bit steep, but it's an instant, so um, it's a pretty good trade-off for me. Uh, Reign of Terror. You don't see a lot of Reign of Terror decks. Um, so five mana for Sorcery uh, Berry. So destroy all white creatures or all green creatures, and you lose two life for each creature put in the graveyard this way. Um, my theory is that um, I'll be casting Salkanar a lot, and I'll be gaining a lot of life to justify uh, the offset of losing all that life. I mean, good luck if you're playing an Elf or a Sapperling deck, but um, depending on your point of view, this uh, card can either um, save the game or uh, ruin somebody's day, uh, preferably both. But um, if you do end up dying, at least you're going to put uh, your token spawning opponent um, under a lot of heat. And uh, what's the old saying from the Dark Knight? Um, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Which is often the way it goes in Commander. Uh, Cruel Revival, a bit of a double ability there. And Absorb Vis. Yeah, I put Absorb Vis in a lot of decks. Um, I guess I'm one of those players that considers myself a bit unlucky when it comes to land, so I like to have some kind of emergency thing there. And also the uh, lose four life and gain four life. That's pretty funny if you've um, got a demon's horn out there and you can brag that you've gained an extra life. The other non-creature, non-artifact spells are firstly the um, multicolored stuff. So I've got the usual Rakdos charm, the Demir charm, uh, Terminate, uh, Perplex. Now Perplex... Um, I've really got it in here for the transmute ability. Uh, transmute was really restricted to the Ravnica set, one of my favorite sets in Magic. Um, can let you dig out that Blanket of Night or that Zombie Master, or the Zombie Trailblazer. Kind of a poor man's uh, vampiric tutor. So Grixis Charm, the usual uh, Grixis Talisman. Croesus Charm, another three, uh, well, another Grixis spell with uh, different utilities there. Um, it's one of those other ones. So Rakdos Charm is my only other destroy artifact spell, I believe. Uh, Krosis Charm can do that on its third mode, so um, it's pretty important in that regard. I don't have a lot of uh, removal going on. Well, a lot of non-creature removal, that is. Uh, Phyrexian Purge. Again, like um, the Reign of spell, you have to pay life to uh, take out some problems that are facing you, especially big things with the green decks. And the last uh, multicolored spell is the Tarn of Souls. Um, I like Tarn of Souls. So you can return a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield if black is spent to cast it. Uh, creatures target player controls get two, get plus two and gain haste if uh, red was spent to cast it. So um, two in one and a huge, huge buff, which is good when you've got um, a, um, a horde of unblockable zombies. Now the last component of the deck I'll talk about are the enchantments. So a lot, so most of these enchantments kind of replicate uh, Blanket of Night. So we've got uh, Evil Presence. I love this old arc that really takes me back. Uh, Leshrac's Ripe. So this is an aura. Uh, target creature gains Swamp Walk. Contaminated Ground. Another um, targeted uh, land shifting ability. Uh, Tainted Well does the same, but you draw a card when it comes into play. Uh, Curse of Shallow Graves. Now I know there's a better one that's been printed. Uh, Curse of Disturbances, I think it's called. Um, I've got that in better decks. Um, Curse of Shallow Graves. Um, you put a zombie into play that's tapped. Mark of the Vampire. Um, enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and has lifelink. Uh, Lili Liliana's Mastery. So, uh, zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and uh, when it enters the battlefield, create two, two, two black zombies. Good buffer. Uh, I've upkept Elder Mastery, so this is from the um, Nicol Bolas side of the dual deck. You're really going to need your Nightscape Familiar down to warrant this spell, but um, uh, late in the game, it's uh, very useful to start um, taking card advantage the other direction, too. 
And final enchantment is another aura, uh, Clutch of Undeath. This is really part of the zombie tribal. So uh, when you've got the Swamp Walk mechanic online, you can uh, bolster your toughest zombie. Otherwise, you can um, sort of power down your opponent's commander if the opportunity presents itself. So that's my Salkanar the Swamp Thing deck. Thanks for watching in, um, and thanks for making it this far if you've gotten to this point. Really appreciate your viewership. I'm going to see if I can arrange a game with a friend and... Uh, test it out and see how it does. Hopefully that'll be up soon. Um, so I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world and um, until the next edition.